Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Deceptive Reality Podcast. My name is Nick, and with me, as always, is the Debonair Bert. Oh, Debonair. I know what Debonair is, Nick. And listen, I'm yeah. Bert. I, I would never call myself Debonair, but listen, I'll let you call me Debonair. It's fine. Yeah, like, it was that the fanciest opening we've ever done? I tried to use my rich voice. You used your dapper voice on that one, oh, That's Nick. right. Oh, dapper. I get one back this week. Yeah. Dapper Nick. Dapper Nick and Debonair Bert. I had a uh, dealer call me today, and he was talking to him, and he said, hey, he said, uh, I'm going to do X, Y, Z. And I said, hey, it's fine. Just send it over in uh, the systems that we use. I said, just right. tell him that you talk to me uh, when you do it. <laughs> And he goes, well, what do I put? Like, do I put Magnificent Bert or do I put, uh, what was the other one he said? Uh, melancholy Bert? I'm like, all right, you need to stop listening to the podcast. I can tell you. Oh, that that's why he was doing that. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. He was like, I can't just call you Bert. I'm like, okay, whatever. Yeah. Well, it's got to be comp like complimentary. You can't yeah. use like, what was the second one you said? It was like. He, Lewis or something. <laughs> well, here's the thing. He gave like four. He gave like oh, four. Wow. Different he gave uh, magnificent. He gave melancholy, which is I think is sad. I think that just yeah, means that's sad. a sad one. Yeah. Uh, he gave like two others. I'm like, come on now. <laughs> like this, this a, fella after my I, job or what? <laughs> yeah, I talked to Bert. He's trying to take your job, Nick. Oh man, he's angling. He's angling. <laughs> Oh, man, it's a brand new week, Nick. Can you believe mm -hmm. it? We survived yeah. another week. Went by. Again. Well, I feel like we don't have to survive the weekend. Like we have to survive the week. That is facts. That so is... we're getting ready for survival. That is facts. Actually, we tried to start uh, about an hour, <laughs> an hour <Yeah>. ago. <laughs> uh, we started early. I told Nick, I said, I still got to record the second half of my podcast. Mm. What's the earliest we can start? It goes. Uh, which you guys aren't going to carry. 5.30 Eastern Standard Time here on Monday. Yeah. Uh, it's now 6.30. My fault. we got some mic audio issues going I'd on. I'd say it's Gremlin's fault. That it, ain't your fault. It really is kind of Gremlin's fault. It has nothing to do with me yeah. for being a buck. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that stuff happens. It's Gremlin's. It does, man. But yeah, we're on, listen, we're on this crazy spree today. This week is my week for anyone that doesn't know. And can oh, I yeah. say, can I say, Nick? Mm-hmm. This might be the most cinematic creation Ooh. I've ever created. I'm here for the cinematics. What I tried to do over the weekend was mm -hmm. I did watch some, uh, a few television shows that's kind of in this genre from like the 90s. Okay. And I said, the first thing I did, and I think I'm genius for this, by the way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I had covered the screen. Okay. And then I just listened to it and I said, how much of the story can I get from just listening? Hmm. And then I said, can I imitate this? Now I had this episode in the hopper. I've got two technically in the hopper. This was one right. of them. And I've been excited to do this one, but I'm like, there was no real pizzazz to it. I just need a little extra spice on it. A little spice, a little burnt salt on there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I said, Let's redo this because the other one's pretty good. The other one's pretty good. But I said, can I liven this one up a little bit? Hmm. So over the weekend, I rewrote some script. So it's right. a little bit different because I've added a whole bunch of little things along the way. Hmm. So from beginning to almost the end, this thing should be pretty fun to listen to. Oh, good. Well, you know, that's one of my favorite things is listening to the segments with all your soundscaping. Yeah, the soundscaping on this one's going to be fun. Now, yeah. I will say this story, if you know it, and I don't know if you do, if you do know it, I'm going to be shocked. Oh, but if you do know it, uh -huh. hopefully it'll be entertaining enough to listen to. If you don't know it, you're probably mm -hmm. it's the by far the most simple story we've ever had. Oh, really? But it's the most complex by the end. If So if I know it, should I pretend I don't know it? No, you say you know it. Oh, okay. Because we're going to see how we did on soundscaping. Listen, if at the end of the day, you can still enjoy it and you know it, mm -hmm. then we're good. Also, when they say the name of the family, I'm going to have to correct some people because some people's 
they're going to assume it's saying something else because it sounds okay. very close to another name. And I'm going to correct that when we come back. Mm-hmm. But do you want to hear what the story is? Roll the cinema film. <laughs> Dad, slow down. What are we doing? We have to keep going. They're after us. They'll find us if we stop. August 2016. The Trump family is speeding down a desolate road far from the comfort of their farm. What started as a calm life, rooted in routine, has quickly spiraled into a frenzy. Phones abandoned. Accounts left untouched. The why and how of it all? Well, that's the part you'll have to figure out. But for now, they run because they believe they have no other choice. But before they reached the breaking point, before the chaos, the Tromps were just like any other family, tending to their farm, living quietly in rural Australia. Yet beneath that calm surface, something was festering, something unseen, something that would push them past the point of no return. You are about to take a journey, not on a road marked on any map, but through the mind of fear. This is the story of the Trump family. And tonight, their tale will take you into... Deceptive Reality. Two things right out the gate. Number one... I feel like you're definitely watching The Twilight Zone. <laughs> Which I love that. And the second one is I just learned about five things I didn't know about Trump. Oh, well, listen, it's not (laughs) Trump. Okay. It's Trump. T-R-O-M-P. Trump. Trump. Okay. So this is like, if he goes into hiding, he'll be Trump. He might be Trump. Listen, (laughs) technically, if you listen to the narration, these folks was going into hiding, Nick. Yeah, I did notice that. Mm -hmm. Um didn't really tell us why but there's a reason for that nick Uh, okay maybe no one knows why well maybe we have to figure that out as we go maybe that's the unsolved mystery part of this nick i'm I'm down for that uh i know i don't know the story okay well that's because i never heard the trump name before that's good trump trump (laughs) donald the trump exactly (laughs) and his family and his entire family (laughs) His uh, Donald Trump and his <laughs> supermodel wife who grew up on the farm. Exactly. And his kids who I can't think of their names. Well, you have a few. You got, uh, for all intents and purposes, Alvanka. <laughs> Alvanka Trump. <laughs> These people are like, shut up talking about all this stuff. Uh, maybe we shouldn't go down this line because people are going to get confused when we talk about their real names. Yeah, they probably will. Later, probably. So we'll stop that. It's not the Trumps. It's the not Trumps. the Trumps. It's the Trumps. So there's no <laughs> confusion because we can't yes. have no confusion around here. Listen, we're a reputable podcast company. Okay? <laughs> that's, that's right. This is like an alternate history of the Trumps. <laughs> it kind of feels that way. It kind of <laughs> does feel that way. I'm not even going to lie. Have you ever heard of uh, the man in the high castle? Man in the High Castle. Yeah. Mm, I don't think so, Nick. No, it, it, it was a book, a, a book or a book series. I can't remember which. And it became a TV series quite recently. And it's what if uh, Germany had won World War II? Oh. And they divided up America in the, like, this is the German part. This is the Japanese part. This is a free part kind oh, of thing. Oh, wow. Yeah, so alternate histories are quite popular now. So this is, uh, this could be it. This could be an alternate universe, Nick. Yeah. Yeah, where they never left the farm. Well, this story, Mm -hmm. if it was an alternative uh, dimension, I feel like we can't say the same thing. Let's call this a parallel universe of sorts. Okay. Okay. I'm down for that. Because we don't want to steal none from no TV shows, Nick. No. We're going to have a podcast, Nick. This is our own separate thing. Gosh. But here's the thing. If we was, the thing that you got to remember, this mm-hmm. story happened in 2016. 
This is this is about as recent as we get. This is pretty recent for us, Nick. Yeah, this is this is yesterday for us. This is basically like yesterday for us. Exactly. <laughs> like we're always like this story takes place in a spooky farmhouse in the 1930s. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, that's our bang zone there. It really is. Listen, we are professionals at that. Okay. That's right. That's right. So it happened August 29th of 2016. I've got my notes here. You guys probably mm-hmm. see me looking at that. Um and it's in Australia. Now, I've never done a story oh, yeah. from Australia. So this is relatively new. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to butcher these names. Not one of them. Mark Trump. Okay. Trump. Mark Trump. And then here's where I, Jacoba. That's that's the ja- mom. Oh, okay. Jacoba Trump. Jacoba Trump. And their three kids, 29 year old Rihanna. Oh, that's an easy one. 25 year old Mitchell. Yeah, easy. And 22 year old Ella. Easy. Easy names is yeah. literally the mom's name that is difficult. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I remember it because I've heard that name before somewhere Jacoba Trump. Uh, Trump. Yeah, you screwed up, Nick. Uh, yeah, I did. It's not Trump, it's Trump. But Jacoba, I've heard that name before for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah, I feel like I have too, but I don't know why. Yeah, it might be from a video game or something. Could be. Now, yeah. what makes this interesting is they was just farmers. They had some farmland. Mm-hmm. They do the typical farm life. Yeah. One day, just randomly picked up and left. That's very odd for, for just a unknown farmer. Really? Yes. Now, the police Play. went and investigated their house. Mm-hmm. They found mobile phones, passports, yeah. and credit cards. Just took off without them. Just took off without them. Any signs of a scuffle? Nope. Oh, we're weird. gonna know what happened to every single person. Oh, really? Oh, yes. So we're gonna have a definitive answer for this. No, we're not gonna oh. understand what happened. Okay, that's what we have to solve. But here's what I'm going to tell you. All right. This moment in time is the only thing that makes any kind of sense. Uh, well, <laughs> I like that. I like that. I think that's going to be good. Yeah, it's, um, it's a little interesting. I like being scared and confused. That's it's my favorite. It's two good things. And you was right. It was the Twilight Zone that I was watching this weekend. Yeah. Or should I say listening to? Mm-hmm. And I've tried to imitate it pretty well this episode. I feel pretty good about it. In the first segment, the style was spot on. Yeah, that's what I'm going for. If I heard that on TV, I just assumed that was the Twilight Zone. And that was my goal. (laughs) Yeah, it was really good. I like that. I wanted to be just like the Twilight Zone, like old, Mm -hmm. you know, whatever the good years was of the Twilight Zone, probably 60s, -hmm. probably late 60s. But that's the way I wanted to feel. Uh, Now, what's weird is... Mm-hmm. The family took cash only. Okay. Well, they don't want to be traced. That's clear. Don't want to be traced. They left in their daughter's SUV. Okay. A Pagat SUV. A what? I think it's pronounced Pagat. P E U G E O T. I feel like we saw that in the GTA, but I'm not sure. Yeah. I, I called it like Pidgeot, but I know it's not that. That sounds like a Pokemon. I, I know, that's Pidgeot. why I called it that. <laughs> it's funny that we mentioned Pokemon because that's going to come up yeah. again. Well, it, it, in relation to this. In relation to this episode. Well, I'm already lost then. Gotta catch them all. Pokemon! I guess. Well, <laughs> they took off to catch Pokemon. They're addicted to Pokemon. When did Pokemon Go come out? Maybe they're addicted to Pokemon Go. We will be mentioning Pokemon Go today, Nick. What? <laughs> this is crazy. Yeah. Ah. Uh, yeah. Okay. I think I'm going to like this. I'm <laughs> so confused. And that's just where I like to that's, live. That's exactly the best thing. <laughs> yeah. It really is. A Pokemon Go mystery with the Tromps. <laughs> <laughs> This is this is a. Uh, I had too much uh, spicy food and then slept and had a, some kind of weird fever dream. Kind of is. It kind of is, Nick. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. 
I like it. So the intro just kind of, they gave us like a surface level. Now, some yeah. of the things I explained, it's going to go into in a little bit more detail. Do you want to at least hear the first part? And maybe we can get some feelers out of that. Yeah, I need some kind of information. Yeah. The opening was just to get us ready. It's to get us excited about this thing, Nick. I am excited. I'm like, I'm super ready for this. Here we go. Monday, August 29th, 2016, Sylvan, Australia. A quiet, unassuming farm becomes the epicenter of a mystery that will ripple across the country. A family of five, Mark and Jacoba Tromp, along with their three adult children, vanish without a trace, leaving behind more questions than answers. This isn't just any road trip, it's a journey into the unknown. A sudden departure, a strange paranoia, and a cryptic series of events that will capture the attention of an entire nation. The Tromps didn't just leave their home, they left behind their phones, their passports, their credit cards, everything but fear. They fled in Ella Tromps SUV, a vehicle that for the next few days would be their only sanctuary or prison. They drove through the night, heading into the darkness, putting miles behind them. 500 miles to be exact as they reached Bathurst, but it wasn't long before paranoia struck. Mitchell Tromp, the only one to bring his phone, soon found himself the target of his parents' growing delusions. Only 19 miles into their journey near Warburton, they became convinced that the device was tracking them. Paranoia gripped tighter. And as his father's voice broke through the suffocating tension, the decision was made. Throw it out, Mitchell. It's tracking us. Now! The phone was tossed into the darkness left behind like the lives they'd once lived. Back in Sylvan, investigators began to piece together the puzzle. Their house untouched, their lives abandoned. Phones, passports, credit cards left behind as if they didn't need them anymore. But perhaps they didn't. This wasn't just a family going off the grid. It was something far more sinister. It wasn't just about leaving behind technology. The Tromps were running from something far greater, a mystery that no one, not even the family, could fully understand. And the question that remains is simple. What were they so afraid of? Well, I guess we were spot on with they didn't want to be tracked. That's why they left everything behind. Correct. Did, did Mitchell sneak his phone with him? That is the assumption. There's not truly a pure answer on that, but it is assumed okay. that is the case. And they just took that from they found it on the side of the road. Yes. Somewhere. It was found, yes. I can't really say a whole lot, but I can tell you that it was found. Okay. Do, did Were they able to glean any information from that phone? No. Of course. No. So he wasn't really actively using it or anything. Let me put it this way. Okay. They didn't need to. They didn't need to. Mm -hmm. Was his severed arm attached to the phone? <laughs> well, his dad didn't make him cut his arm off, which is good. Okay, that's good. He just wind up the electronic window on it. Ah. Just required him to throw it out the window. Right. Okay. So that's the, the way thing. you're wording things is making me suspicious. Like, oh, is he doing anything on the phone? He didn't have to. Yeah, listen, he didn't. Oh. They didn't need to do a whole lot of searching on that phone when they found it, Nick. Was it Smash the Smithereens? Is that why? Nope. <gasps> well, I'm stuck then. I don't know <laughs> what that is. Really, you didn't give us a ton more information. They took off in the, in the SUV of, what was it, the daughter? The daughter's car. Yes. Yep, the daughter's car. Left all their traceable stuff behind. Mm hmm. That's why the credit cards were still there. That's why passports were still there. They couldn't use them. They didn't want anyone to find out where they were. And it sounds, it, it sounds like it's the authorities they didn't want to find them. Yeah, you would think that. Now, remember, it's five right. people that has this happen. Right. And they're adults. All three mm -hmm. kids are still adults. Oh, they're, yeah, they're grown. What was it, 39 one of them was or something? Uh, like they are, to be exact, because, you know, mm -hmm. we're a reputable podcast. 
That's uh, right. 29. About oh, 29. 25, and the youngest is 22. Yeah, that's still... Like, I was out on my own long before that. So. Oh, yeah. Me too. Yeah, so that's uh, that's grown. That's grown kids. Correct. Now, grown adults. The interesting thing is all the kids worked on the farm also. Okay. So they worked on this farm seven days a week. Like, it's a farm. It's a full-time mm. job. So they were at that farm helping their parents. But just out of the blue, August 29th. Right. Everyone piles into the youngest daughter's vehicle. Takes and off. Rolls out for 500 miles. For 500 miles. Yes. Interesting you would say that, too. Mm-hmm. So that's how far they made it. Yep. 500 miles away from their home. Okay. Hmm. And then they were caught where they stopped. Nope. That's just where we stopped in the story. Oh, okay. Okay. Fair enough. And it was... No? Mitchell got caught at 19 miles into the trip. Right. So he, he had it for a fair amount of time, really. About, depending on the speed they were going. Yeah, about probably, you know, 20 some minutes, probably. Yeah. I wonder how we got caught. I mean, we'll never know that, but... We will never know that, Nick. Unless he was playing Pokemon Go in it. His, <laughs> egg, ha- his egg hatched. And Maybe. it was like, ding. It's like, ah, oh, dang it. Oh no, throw it back. But wait, I gotta Gosh. see my egg hatch first. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine? Right. That'd be horrible. Ah, man, that game was so huge here. There was people going up and down the roads with like boards with additional phones yeah. glued on them and stuff like that. Uh, you know, it was just wild. People, I thought this was against the spirit of the game, but there were people driving around doing it. Like, I, I participated in this, but we walked. Oh, we like, know. We, yeah. There was like, a point in time when Nick and I talked about Pokemon Go, and Nick, oh, every yeah. single evening, mm-hmm. had to go for his walk. He grabbed some Pokemons. And I think for a while, you didn't have a Pokestop near you. Oh, no. There I there might be now, but I don't think there's any Because Nick nearby. complained about it. He was like, there ain't no yeah. Pokespots near here. Yeah, there really wasn't. I'm I like, bet there is now. But like how do you get the balls then? Like you need the Pokestops to get yeah. the balls. You know, you know what's really funny is I didn't know a darn thing about Pokemon mm-hmm. before that game came out. And it was just fun to go rambling about catching monsters. <laughs> like that was cool. <laughs> that is true. Yeah, a lot of uh, people went up to the... And I know we're getting off topic, so I'm going to no, stop this trust soon. Me. But, uh, we'll be on topic, trust me. Oh, oh okay. Oh. Well, I don't know why they left their phones at home if they want Pokemon. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so we got a pretty f- important lighthouse mm-hmm. uh, not too far from here. And everyone went there at night, sometimes at like 3 in the morning, catching Pokemons, battling on these gyms and stuff like that. And the lighthouse had never seen the amount of donations that it was getting. They had donation boxes and they had to keep putting out bigger and bigger ones. Wow. Because they were crammed so tight with bills, like money, that they were overflowing every night. Because people would go there and just for the right to wander around to catch Pokemon, they were jamming, you know, like five, 10, 20 bucks in there at a time. And these were boxes the size of probably imagine what your monitor's like. Oh, yeah. Pokemon made that lighthouse some yeah. money. Yeah, they built a lot of stuff there. That's actually where the uh, colorblind binoculars I was telling you about. Oh, yeah. like the, That's that how they got them, Nick. They, it's how they got them. And they got a restaurant there now. They've got like observation decks. They've got a trail. And if you're a horror movie fan, that's where the lighthouse was filmed. Look at that. Look yeah. At that. We had uh, Willem Dafoe and Robert Pattinson here. Think about it. Mm-hmm. Because of all them Pidgeots y'all was catching at that lighthouse. Yeah. Yep. You funded all that stuff, Nick. 
All that stuff was thanks to Pokemon Go and all those little fish I caught. Not long after Pokemon Go came out, Nick said he lost some weight because of Pokemon Go too. Oh heck yeah! I can't I remember get what into you said. that game again. It was a you lost a decent amount. I forget oh, exactly yeah. what it was. Yeah, I don't remember what it was now either. But I was out there pounding <laughs> pavement every uh, every night, so I guess you can't avoid that. I think we were all addicted. I remember going on vacation the first year that Pokemon Go came out. And I was like, huh, these are all different types of Pokemon because I was in a different state. Yeah. So like we was at the beach and like there was beach Pokemon there. I'm like, I would have never seen these in my cornfields. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. Oh, man. Like when I went to the city, I was catching them from my friend's apartment, from, you know, the malls, <laughs> all this stuff like that. It was fantastic. Who would have thought? Pokemon Go would bring so many people yeah. together. So happy. Oh, yeah. And everyone was so friendly. Like, I mean, people are probably listening to this now and they're like, aren't these guys adults? What are they doing <laughs> playing Pokemon Go? Well, it was fun. Not only <laughs> right? that, but it was 10 years ago. Oh, that's right, too. I mean, we were still adults then, but yeah, much, much less adulty adults. I think it came out in 2016, 2015, 2016. See, that's what's wild, because that's when 20 is 2016 is when this takes place. Exactly, Nick full circle exactly and mm -hmm. we will be hearing about pokemon go again here in the very near future which i know is just shocking to everybody i don't believe it i don't believe it oh it's going to be a big part of this too nick mm. you, you know what uh i think killed pokemon go what they add like a lot of us wanted to literally catch them all like that song says <laughs> yeah and then they just add, like we weren't all there yet and they just added a bajillion more yeah they did and so now it's like well i i'm further back than when i started like i don't want to correct like i can't achieve this i'm not a unemployed kid i can't <laughs> you know before pokemon go pokemon go came out mm -hmm. there was a application that i had on my phone that was similar to it mm -hmm. but different and what it was, it was a walking app. Right. But there was zombies. Oh, is it? What's it called? It's just called Zombie Run, isn't it? I think it is. And there's like an entire yeah. storyline. And depending on how fast you run or walk or something like that, determines mm -hmm. if you can get away from these zombies or not. That's fun. I love this kind oh, of man. augmented reality stuff. I do too. I enjoy it. As dumb as it sounds. Yeah. Um, but I did that for a while and I had a blast with that. Yeah, probably got good cardio out of that too. I did. I probably almost died a couple of times. I'm like, these ain't real zombies. What am I trying to do right now? I'm too old for this. <laughs> so it's CGI like in the middle of a field rolling around screaming. Ah, ah my chest. He's getting me. <laughs> well, Nick, mm -hmm. we're about to jump into a whole new day. Yeah, I need... A lot more information this time around. Well, I can't guarantee a whole lot more, Nick. Okay. I'm giving it to you in bite-sized increments. Not bite-sized for a guy of my size. <laughs> this is like nibbles. You're I giving mean, me nibbles. I mean, listen, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Uh, yeah, I'll figure it. I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to figure it out. Hope you do, because there's theories at the end. Just FYI. Oh, I'm not going to present you a theory. I'm going to give you the <laughs> definitive truth. Oh. Fair enough. <laughs> well, let's see if we can give you some more info. All right. By the next morning, Tuesday, August 30th, things were already beginning to unravel. Mitchell Trump, 25 years old, left the family just as the sun began to rise. Alone, he abandoned the paranoia that had gripped his parents, heading in a direction that would separate him from the mysterious journey forever. The rest of the Trumps, Mark, Jacoba, Rihanna, and Ella, pressed on heading toward the Janelin Caves. But even here, their paranoia tightened its grip. Something snapped. At the caves, 29-year-old Rihanna and 22-year-old Ella made a break for it. In a desperate move, they stole a car, escaping their parents and speeding toward Goulburn, 80 miles away. But in a bizarre twist, Rihanna and Ella didn't stay together for long. After reporting their parents as missing, the sisters split up. And what happened next would only deepen the mystery. Keith Whitaker was driving his Ford F-250 when he felt it. A sudden, unexpected kick. Confused, he pulled over only to find Rihanna Trump curled up in the back of his truck. Catatonic, 
She didn't know her name. She didn't know where she was. And she certainly didn't know how she'd ended up there. Meanwhile, Ella Trump had managed to return home by Tuesday night. But she wasn't alone. The police were already there, and what they found inside the house only made the story stranger. The Trump home was unlocked. The door left ajar. Inside, chaos. Documents scattered everywhere. Passports, credit cards, financial records. But this wasn't ordinary chaos. No, the police found the papers in neat piles, arranged methodically as if the family had been searching for something. Something important. It was becoming clear that whatever had driven the Tromps from their home wasn't just fear. It was obsession. And as the police dug deeper, one question remained. How much trouble could a family of farmers really get into? What the flippity Jim is this guy? I had to think hard to think of something to say that wasn't swearing because I wanted to say what the other F word is going on here. Yeah, I told you. Bite size, Nick, because if I gave it to yeah. you in large bites. Well, that, that one had 10 times the information the other ones had. Mm -hmm. So Mitchell breaks off. He's still mad about his cell phone. Uh, so that's why he broke off. Maybe he's like, you sons of guns. <laughs> sons of guns. Yeah. This, this episode will make you swear. Even if you're not a swearing person. Exactly. He's like, I'm going back in my cell phone. <laughs> yeah. I, a, I got some Pikachu's to some evolve. Pikachu's to evolve. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so, yeah. So then the two daughters break off, steal a vehicle. Mm hmm. How do they even know how to do that? They're farmers, Nick. Oh, well, I suppose. I guess farmers know some things. Sometimes you got to hot wire stuff, Nick. Hmm. So I assume that's what they did. They took off, went to a town, reported their parents missing, mm -hmm. which they know right where they are. So they know that's where weird. they left them. Yeah. They know where they left them. Uh huh. Uh, one of them goes home. Yep. Ella did. Yeah, Ella, we didn't we didn't hear much about what happened. I think that's probably on future segments. Mm -hmm. But one of them ended up in a trunk, confused. Rihanna in the back of a truck. In the back, oh, in the back of a truck, not the trunk. Okay, yep. that makes a little more sense. Yeah, back of a truck in the bed. Yeah, she she must have been like knocked out or drugged or something. Couldn't remember her name. Didn't yeah. know who she was. Had no yeah. clue where she was. <laughs> well, I mean, the only assumption to, to be made is Ella did that to, uh, I forget her name now. Again. Rihanna? Rihanna. Ella did that to Rihanna and then took off her home. Yeah. Now, one part I was kind of unclear about is did the police get there after Ella went home or before Ella? They was there before. Home? Okay. And they found everything in neat piles. Yes. Hmm. Yep. And they they were thinking it wasn't fear, it was obsession. But what what could have a bunch of farmers done? That is the that question posed. This theory. Yeah. Well, what's interesting was mm -hmm. there was a newspaper. I didn't put this right. in the narration. Daily okay. Telegram. Mm -hmm. And what they said was that the police found that the Trumps had gone through years of the farm's financial reports shortly before they left. Hmm. But still, I mean, they must... Like, it's not like you wake up one day and you say, you know, I should go back through all our financials. There's no reason. Right. And then you see something in this information that you should be crazy familiar with. <laughs> you know? Like you shouldn't like when you go back in your financials, you shouldn't be like, oh, I didn't know this. Right. <laughs> right. Correct. Like, and then they see something and they're just like, wow, we got to get out of here. <laughs> now, the other interesting thing is mm -hmm. there was several piles of documents throughout the entire home, including right. passports and credit cards of every mm -hmm. single family member that we mentioned. Right. An officer is quoted saying the piles were so very ordered that they were clearly looking for something, end quote. Right. It's weird that grown 
uh, well, I guess, do they all live there still? Yep. They all okay. live on the farm. It's it's almost weird that they'd have passports even, really. Well, some of them. They're uh, just normal they people. Trips. They're just ordinary people. Oh, yeah. Hmm. I'm trying to have rolling through my head what it could possibly be. Because like I said, they wouldn't be surprised with their financials. Nope. <laughs> Did they discover a chase money hack? <laughs> Not a very good one, Nick. I don't think there is a good one. Not according to what they're doing nowadays. No, very topical humor in case anyone doesn't know. Uh, people were doing check fraud because Bouncing they thought check. it was a, uh, yeah. But they, um, they well, they technically did find a glitch. It wasn't, um, you know, it's like, I don't know about there, but here, if you deposit a check, it really doesn't know what's in that envelope. <laughs> But it'll only give you a small portion of the check until the check clears. Oh. But I guess the Chase Bank was giving them as much as they wanted from the check, just assuming. Okay. So, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. So that's like massive fraud. And anything over, <laughs> what was fraud. it? What is it? Over $5,000 is a federal felony or something like that? But yeah, that sounds about right. I think it's yeah. anything over a thousand dollars i think oh is it over a thousand i think it's oh, over a that's thousand not good. yeah because there's people doing like hundreds of thousands yeah you can go to jail for that oh yeah and i i think they're turning it all over to the cops i think they are actually going after all these people oh i'm sure um but yeah these people thought it was a free <laughs> money hack bless <sighs> you thank you no one would even uh, know nick I turned my oh, mute. Right. I muted my mic. Well, just, just, just cut out the bless you too, <laughs> and and the thing I just said. <laughs> oh. But yeah, so people were like writing themselves checks for forty thousand dollars and they're withdrawing forty thousand dollars. Some people tried to put it in other bank accounts. Some people tried Idiots. to put it in PayPal. Some people spent it right away. The thing that blows my mind. Uh huh. Is they're acting like this is a new thing? Like this was fraud right. twenty five, thirty years ago, and they're like, "We right. came up with this hack." It wasn't a hack thirty I years know. ago, idiot. I know. And they were so sure that they were going to get away with it. Oh, yeah. Um, and they would have too if it wasn't for the meddling kids, right? Because if they had kept the money and were able to return it. That stops it from being a crime. Yeah, but they can't do that. But Nick. they can't because they spent it they on stuff. nonsense. That's right. And now their account's 30000 40000 in the hole. And they, they're like, well, I need to pay my rent. Can I get that 9000 that should be in there? No. 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 And I've heard in the U.S., and maybe it's the same in Canada, but in the U.S., that once you do this kind of thing, you cannot get a bank account again. Correct. Yeah. How do you live without a bank account? Uh, so a lot of times you can get those cards that are like debit cards. Right. But they're not attached to a bank. Oh. And that's generally the only way that you can do that. And like you can get paid on those? Yes. Okay. Because we were talking about it at work and I said, if I showed up here and said, I don't have a bank account, can this multinational comp corporation pay me in cash every week <laughs> and he's like nope, nope. <laughs> there's, be a, there's a ton you know? there's a ton of yeah. people that i know that has screwed up really and they've lost their checking accounts and they've had to be able to get they're like debit cards technically yeah as long as you've got a routing number and an account number oh, and it's okay. attached to that debit card it's just it like goes prepaid right cards i guess yeah. kind of yep okay well, this is what I figure uh, the Trumps have gotten into. I mean, that's a great guess. <laughs> that is a great guess. That's like, you know, when you make a vase or a vase or however you say it, mm -hmm. you got to start with that lump of clay you just slam down on the spinning wheel. You do have to start out with it. All right. That's that's, that's where, where we that's are. That's the clay I'm slumping down here. <laughs> well, right now we've got one kid at home. Right. We've got one kid that just got found. They don't even know where they're at. Yeah. Got another kid that just walked off. Right. And we got the two parents is still out and about. Yeah. Jacoba and what's the man's name again? Uh, Jacoba and Donald. 
Mark. Mark. Mark and Jacoba. Yes. I'm glad uh, I've got still notes, on the lamb because I would. Yeah, I guess so. Those are, <laughs> that's, there's a lot of names in this one. So Mark and Jacoba still on the run. Ella's at home. Uh, Mitchell's looking for his uh, Pokemon Go phone. Correct. And that's kind of, kind of where we're at. It's quite quite a story so far. Yeah. And it's all because of a Chase Infinite Money hack. That's what it is. <laughs> and Pokemon Go. And Pokemon Go somehow. We don't know yet. I'm assuming they're they're chasing oh it couldn't be that they were going to get one of those region locked Pokemon somewhere. I mean, we're gonna have to find out eventually, Nick. If that's what it is, I'm going to slam my head on this desk. <laughs> do you want to hear the next segment? Maybe we get I, a little more information. I sure do. I, I'll tell you, I am gosh darn intrigued. <laughs> See, I still got to fight the, the urge to swear on this. I'm I'm gosh darn intrigued. Prepare to be even more intrigued, Nick. All right. All right. This can't get wilder. <laughs> no, yes, it can. One by one, the Trump family fractured. On Wednesday, August 31st, the first to return was Mitchell Trump, arriving home by train, alone. But as Mitchell was stepping off the train, far from the confusion of the road, his parents were driving deeper into the darkness. Mark and Jacoba Trump, once together now divided, drove to Wangarata, where they too went their separate ways. Jacoba headed north, while Mark stayed behind in the shadows of Wangarata. And it was here, as night fell, that the strange events continued. At around 10 p.m., a young couple lost in the innocent world of Pokemon Go would come face to face with something far more real and far more disturbing. As they drove through Wangarata, they found themselves tailgated by a car. The car matched the make and color of Mark Trump's vehicle and it followed dangerously close inches from their bumper. I can barely see their headlights. They're right on us. The young man pulled over hoping to escape whatever was happening, but the car behind them stopped too. The figure inside, believed to be Mark Trump, stepped out and approached their car. But then, Listen, mister. something strange happened. We don't want any trouble. He stopped, standing in the middle of the road, staring at them, not moving, not speaking, just watching. And then, without warning, Mark Trump turned away. He walked into the shadows of Wangarata's Marywalk Park and disappeared. With no sign of Mark, the police turned to another mystery. A break-in had been reported at Miller's Cottage Motel in Wangarata. The room was left in disarray, the door wide open. And though there was no confirmation, police believed that Mark Trump had stayed there that night, hidden in the shadows once again. While Mark vanished, Jacoba's journey continued. By Thursday, September 1st, she had taken public transportation to the city of Yas. Alone and disoriented, she tried to book a room in a local motel, but her confusion was apparent. A concerned passerby, sensing that something was wrong, helped escort her to the hospital. Jacoba was safe, but the mystery of the Trumps was far from over. Their actions made little sense, their journey only more cryptic with each passing day. Mark had vanished into thin air, and the search for him would continue. But the question still lingered. What had driven the Trump family into this spiral of madness? One by one, the Trumps were being found, but the mystery remained as deep as ever. Was this a case of shared delusion? Or was there something more? Something hiding in the shadows, pushing them to the edge of sanity? Listening to this story is pushing me to the edge of sanity. <laughs> I, I love it, but it's, it's just mental like this is a family who were doing their ta here's my new lump of clay family was doing their taxes found a little bag he didn't know what it was and Ooh. said let's uh let's all try out this uh oh no they didn't know what it was they're like let's try out this little bag of peyote yeah at the same time and have some kind of crazy drug fueled pokemon go expedition now here's a question i would have for you nick yeah yeah Let's say you was mm -hmm. living with your parents. You're right. Let's say mid 20. Look, let's not even say you're the 29 year old. Okay. And okay. I'm like the 22. Yeah. Just 22 is fine. Okay. And your parents become unhinged. Right. 
you can look at them and go, these folks are crazy. <laughs> Would you get in a car with them and then travel <sighs> far away? I, I'd have to just to make sure they don't do something like drive off a cliff or something. But if that was true, you wouldn't leave them the very next day. I know that's where it's not adding up. Exactly. That's my point. Like, well, none of this adds up. Like, so we just sort of uh, ruled out that it was that it was um, of their own volition. But how does two adults wrangle three other adults against their will? Right. That's that's also really not possible that I think of. And then even then, why are they all splitting up? Right. And why isn't anyone calling authorities? And why isn't anyone? If you notice, nobody's staying together in this thing. No, not a single person is staying together. They're all split up now. Every single one of them is completely split up. In fact, right now, Mark, he's going to become our our next one, right? Because we kind of know where everyone else is at this point. Right. Well, he just walked off into the park, didn't he? Just walked. Well, he walked off into the park. And then later, the police get a report that this cabin had been ransacked. Oh, okay, I didn't know if that was before or after. It was after. Okay. So after that, they're like, oh, wait a second. This has to be our boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I imagine it can't be too much weird stuff going on around there. I mean, what Hill's else Hillsback is a wild place, I guess. I mean, what else could you possibly think? Yeah. So I don't know. Like, man, you got Mitchell. He broke off from the family and he arrived back at home via the train. Now, El is right, already said there. He got there. Oh, okay. I thought it said that he got there first, and that part confused me earlier. The, the way that I meant to put that was first of the oh. remaining. Oh, okay. I didn't okay. write that right. That's my fault. It was oh, Ella okay. first, then Mitchell of the ones left. Mitchell's right. the next one, the first one to get there from the ones that's still there or still out. Right. And I imagine the cops are just scooping them up as they. Yeah, oh yeah, as they show up. Oh like, yeah, they're like, "Oh baby, we need to know what's going on because this is crazy." Yeah, they, <laughs> this is a rough one though, because if they, if the people were like, "Yeah, we ain't talking to you," and what are you doing in our house? Like, there's, there's no crime. They've not uncovered a single crime here. They can't really be there. No, but they don't even understand what's going on. Like at this, actually, point, how did they get? How did the cops get involved at all? My guess is it's a farm. Right. So probably some people's there and they're like, hey, this spot is not supposed to be vacant. Where's everyone at? Right. They probably did their stuff because you got to remember that they've been gone a total of a few days at this point just for the siblings. Yeah. But this story is going to take the course of almost a week. Oh, really? (laughs) Oh, yeah. Yeah. But someone must have called the cops to the farm because they. I'm sure showed up pretty quick everything that i found i couldn't find exactly what made them do it right this started on august 29th of 2016 and august has 31 days right so right now in the story we're only on uh august 30th okay and at the the end of it is September 1st and that was when Miss Trump took public transportation to Yass. Right. And she tried to hmm. book a motel. So technically for her, she's on day four. Yeah. And then, she's going to have a hard time booking a hotel. Yeah. Good luck. That's why someone took her basically to a hospital. It was like, right. hey, she's got some stuff going on. <laughs> like, Yeah. Woo. So yeah, none of this is making any kind of sense. But I did tell no. you Pokemon mm-hmm. Go would come into the story. Yeah. And you know what? I bet a lot of crimes were either stopped or solved oh, probably. by all the people wandering around at night playing Pokemon Go. Oh, for sure. If like anything, these... an agenda. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, imagine all these places that a serial killer or someone might go to 
catch people unawares. And now there's like 40 people hanging around there stuffing $20 bills into donation boxes <laughs> or... Right. You know, like you think you're alone in the middle of the woods, but nope, someone's chasing a Bulbasaur. Or <laughs> yeah, all right. Right. Like, you can't get away with anything. I, I would wonder, and I'd love to see the stats, if crime dipped. Oh, I'm sure it did. It would have had to. During have. that time. I think so. It would have had to. Have. The, height, the height of Pokemon Go, it must have went like... Oh, probably. Trespassing, on the other hand, way, way up. <laughs> way up. <laughs> In fact, we were following the trail of something mm-hmm. in, in behind these buildings down on like uh, the waterfront and the cops showed up. Oh, wow. But there were other people there, so they caught them and we just like took off. <laughs> we were like, tee hee, you are getting away. <laughs> Nick was being a doggone trespasser. That's so right. Well, we didn't even realize we were. We were, we were intent on <laughs> tracking down this, this Pokemon or something. I don't know what it was. It's but a Pidgeot. Them Pidgeots, yeah. man. You gotta chase them. Yeah, I guess. And there was another couple behind us, and the cops rolled up and got them. And they, you know what? Props to them. They didn't snitch us out. We took I mean, off the other way. They're Canadian, Nick. They're not gonna snitch yeah. you out. No, they wouldn't do that. They wouldn't do that. Not in Canada land. That's impossible. No. No. And I mean, it's it's the code of the Pokemon. That's right. Yeah. Pokemon catchers don't snitch. I'm surprised those two people that got followed by Mark told anyone. I mean, I think it scared them half to death. Yeah, probably. They were like, ah. We're really terrified, but we got to catch this. We got to catch this Gengar we before we go this home. Gengar, the Gengar, and a dog on Jigglypuff. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> now, what's but interesting? I, I, I do like how that came in, by the way. It, like, and it played sorry. perfectly. As soon as you yeah. mentioned Pokemon Go earlier, I'm like, this is gold. Yeah, pure yeah. gold. You predicted that somehow, oh, yeah, for sure. It's a dumb luck, Nick, but I'll take it. <laughs> now, what's interesting is. Mm-hmm. We now know where Rihanna is, mm-hmm. Ella, Mitchell, uh, the Jacoba. mom's name, Jacoba. Jacoba. Mark is the only one that's still on the run, and we we got a rough idea where he is. We I think we roughly do. Yeah. This next segment, we mm-hmm. find him, Nick. Okay. Now remember, we're on day three. On March the first, I'm sorry, day four, technically on right. March 1st, because it all started on the 26th, 27th, 28th. No, wait a second. 26th, 27th, 28th, 29th, 30th, 31st. So technically, right. this is day six, technically. Wait, weren't we in September? Or no, we're August? In September now. Yeah, so it's August. August is where August. we started. So March is nowhere involved in this. Did I say March? Yeah. All right. Well, this is what happens when you edit late night for podcasts. So <laughs> I think you killed Mark. I may have killed Mark. It up, you're not getting your story straight. I'm sorry. You killed him for his Bulbasaur. It's a misunderstanding. <laughs> so what I was supposed to say, and it wasn't right. even the 26th, August 29th, right. August 30th, August 31st, September right. 1st mm-hmm. is where we are. And that's four days in. Yeah. So technically, we're four days into this story. I can't. Man, they must be so smelly by now. <laughs> well, not Mark. They think he broke into that oh, yeah, hotel, that's right. motel, Holiday Inn. Man, I wonder how long he had there before he had to take off. Not very long a day. The next morning, mm-hmm. I believe, is when they found it. Oh, okay. Well, hopefully he took a shower then. He may have. Now, do you want to see where old Mark was? Yeah, let's see what Mark's gotten up to. Let's see what old Mark's up to. Marky Mark and old the Pokemon Bunch. Mark with his non-loving Pokemon self. That's right. On Saturday, September 3rd, five days after leaving his home and disappearing into the unknown, Mark Trump was found walking aimlessly along a road in Wangarata. It was 5.50 p.m., and though Mark had been missing for days when the police found him, he was calm, too calm. At the police station, Mark was questioned. 
They searched for answers, piecing together the events of the past week. After five hours and a mental health assessment, Mark Tromp left the station with his family, sparing the waiting media nothing more than a defiant gesture. But as the dust settled, Mark publicly apologized for, quote, the hurt and concern caused by these events, end quote. Yet the apology did little to quell the mounting questions. Why did the Trump family flee their home? Why did they unravel so completely, so inexplicably? The next day, Mitchell and Ella stood before the media, thanking the police and the press for finding their father. They offered no explanation, no answers. Instead, they expressed their own confusion, mirroring the questions swirling in the minds of those who had followed their strange journey. Even the Trump family seemed as perplexed as everyone else. How could this happen to them? A family with no history of mental illness, no signs of drug use, no debts, no ties to any cult or organization. And yet one by one they fled. One by one they were found. And not one of them could explain why. Sergeant Mark Knight, who worked tirelessly on the case, stated that there were no signs of drugs, no evidence of mental illness. This left one lingering question. What caused this? Now that the Tromps have been found, the story has only just begun. For in the absence of clear answers, theories have emerged. Could this have been a case of shared delusion? A phenomenon where one person's paranoia spreads to the entire family? The Tromp family's journey may have ended, but the mystery of what drove them from their home has only begun. Next, we cover the three most popular theories. Oh, cliffhanger. Yes. I wanted to make sure everyone knew... And I gave <laughs> gave a little snapshot into the one because I kind of want to talk about that a little bit in this segment. Right. It's so weird. They all come back and they're just, they're just not saying a thing. Not a word. No. But, but you know, mm -hmm. sorry, go ahead. No, go. You're fine. I was going to say you brought up shared delusions, but if that's the case, they would remember that at least one, at least one. Yep. For sure. So that theory either doesn't fly with me or it was some kind of delusion that was so embarrassing they just don't want to talk about it. Well, here's the thing. Mark mm -hmm. was found five days later walking down the street. Right. He was completely calm when they picked him up. Mm -hmm. In fact, they was confused with how calm he was. Well, yeah, I would be too. Because it made no sense. He's already shown aggression to these kids doing this Pokemon Go in the vehicle. Like he's tailgating yeah. them, you know, hawking the horn, screaming, gets out the car, acts like he's going to fight, and then he runs into the woods. So he's already yeah. got this impression of possibly being a little, un a little unhinged. Right. Well, the weird thing is, is, man, did he even run into the woods? It's just sort of like he, he just strolled in, stopped, stared, and was like, eh. it's like in a video game when someone's like, spots a thief in the night and they're like, oh, I'm going to get you. And then it's like, oh, because it was nothing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And wander <laughs> off into Correct. the bushes, you know? Correct. Same thing. Like, that that's weird behavior. Very weird. They take him back to the station. They question him. Mm -hmm. He has no answers for anything. He walks out yeah. of the station. You got all these media because they're like, what is going on? And he gives them a nice gesture. Yeah, a one finger wave. One finger wave. <laughs> Could you imagine the media too? They're like, what is going on? <laughs> what is wrong with this person? What is wrong with these people? They're all crazy. Yeah. The next day, oh my goodness. Ellen Mitchell go to the media and they thank him. Thank you so much for finding my dad. Appreciate all the support. We don't really yeah. know what's going on. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> Goodbye. Never talk to you yeah, again. It's like there's two of you. What do you mean? Yeah. Two of the five. And you don't know what's going on? Yeah, you were there for most of it. Right. Doesn't and they're make not any the sense. two. They're not even the two that lost their memory or their thought process. Rihanna right. was the one that was in the truck bed that couldn't remember her name, couldn't remember where yeah. she was, couldn't remember anything. And they uh, this is the worst part. They tested him for drugs and it was clear. Clear. I don't know how that could even be possible. Doesn't make any sense. No drugs. Right. They checked into their background. There mm -hmm. was 
no previous debts that was owed. There was not right. like an extreme amount of money that they owed anybody. Mm-mm. Uh, they wasn't part of any church. In fact, they no. was considered agnostic. Yeah. No organizations were they a part of. No cults. Nothing like that. Um, no history of mental illness. None. <laughs> so, I mean, what do you do in a case like that? Like, literally. Like, well, you can't force them to talk. It wasn't even a crime. There's no crime. This is like they didn't even have any business looking for him or being in those. There was crimes because they stole a car. Okay. Though, yeah. This is after, though. After. But they couldn't give any rhyme or reason why yeah. they did what they did. Which is so odd. I don't know. Now, what I find interesting is mm-hmm. the parents is going down the road. Mitchell's the first one to break off. He's like, I'm out. Yeah. Then Rihanna and Ella ditch their parents to the point to where they steal a car. Mm -hmm. They dip, report their parents missing. Right. And then the two of them split. Yeah. Now, that doesn't make any sense. No sense. Then you've got Mark and his lovely wife, Jacoba. Or Mm -hmm. is that Jacoba, right? Yeah, that's what we've been saying yeah. anyway. <laughs> they go for a while and then they dip from each other. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like nobody stayed with anybody. No. And when they're found, they're just sort of like, uh, yeah, I don't remember. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. You know? Yeah. I like I'm here five, six, seven hundred miles away from home. Correct. It's like, wait, you know, just trying to do regular things like rent a room. Yes. Like, like you, you're completely unconcerned. You're trying to rent rooms. You're doing all this stuff, and the cops find you like, "Hey, what's going on? You've been missing." <laughs> you're just like, "I, I don't know." That's what doesn't make any sense to me is the fact yeah. that nobody has a memory of what's going on. Yeah, no, I think they do. I feel like they do, and they're just like covering it up. There's, there's something wrong here. What could be wrong? There, there's something. That caused all this one, whatever it is, whatever it is, they they don't want to talk about it afterwards. There's no way they could all not know what went on. I don't think. Why would just average farmers go to the point to where they're breaking the law then? Maybe they're average farmers like Robert Picton was an average farmer. <laughs> I see where you're going here. I got you. You know, maybe they were doing some untoward stuff and the cop just never found it because it wasn't in their house. I mean, it's possible. Anything's possible. But but what would cause them to flee? I don't know. That's what doesn't make sense. None of this makes sense. That's right, because that's the event that brought the cops there. So they wouldn't want to do that. I would not think so. (laughs) I'm just running in circles. I got like, I, as soon as they said drugs weren't a factor, I'm like, well, <laughs> that's that. I don't know. Like, this sounds druggy to me. It does sound a very, uh, very odd. Yeah. Do you want to hear the three most popular theories and see I, if any of them click? <laughs> I do, because I don't know how anyone would have come up with one. (laughs) So I'm real curious what kind of stretches we got going on here. Well, these are the three most popular, and then we'll discuss them when we come back. Sounds good. With the Trump family reunited and the immediate danger gone, one question remains. What caused their sudden, bizarre behavior? While the events of their disappearance are now public, the answers are anything but clear. And so, we turn to the theories. The first theory suggests that the Trumps may have been poisoned, slowly, insidiously, by an environmental toxin on their farm. Perhaps some unseen chemical seeped into their lives, causing hallucinations, paranoia, and the bizarre delusions that followed. It's not impossible. Farms are filled with pesticides, fertilizers, and machinery. Any one of these could have created an invisible threat, warping the minds of the Trump family and sending them spiraling into fear. The second theory comes from the darker corners of the internet. 
Could the Trumps have been running from something or someone? Some speculate that the family was entangled with the mob. It suggested that someone or something was after them, forcing them to flee in the dead of night. At one point, the family had even considered fleeing the country altogether. They abandoned that plan, fearing their passports might be tracked. But what if their fears weren't just paranoia? What if someone truly was after them? While this theory has little evidence to support it, it's not difficult to imagine how fear, whether real or imagined, can push people to the edge. But perhaps the most compelling theory is psychological, not physical. A rare condition, one that may explain how a seemingly healthy family could descend into madness together. Folie à deux, a shared delusion, passed from one family member to another. The term was coined after a French couple, who both believed their home was being invaded by unknown forces. They saw dust, lint, strange signs that no one else could perceive, but to them, it was real. In the case of the Tromps, could it be that one member's paranoia spread to the others, like a virus of the mind? Is it possible that, in their isolation, their shared fears amplified, growing more and more real until they had no choice but to flee? Whether it was a toxin, an external threat, or a shared delusion, we may never know the full truth behind the Trump family's flight from reality. But one thing is certain. Sometimes, the greatest mysteries aren't the ones that are seen, but the ones that exist within. In the case of the Trumps, the truth may be stranger than fiction. And as the theories continue to swirl, one question remains. What would drive a family, seemingly grounded in reality, to abandon everything and run? Perhaps we'll never know. Or perhaps the answer is out there, waiting to be discovered. Until then, the mystery of the Trump family lingers, an unsettling reminder that sometimes reality is far more deceptive than we realize. Oh, I'm going to blast two of those theories right away. <laughs> okay. I'm going to leave the middle one alone because there could be something to that. Okay. I'll start with the I'll start with the third one. I've heard of Folia de. Mm -hmm. In fact, that is the name of the new Joker movie. And I've seen that in real life. I've been a part of that before. You know, someone's like, oh, is that light in the sky moving weird? And then the other person's like, oh, I hadn't noticed it, but kind of is. Does it look like a UFO to you or something like that? And, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing happens a lot. But you don't hear the term Folia sank very often. Which yeah. is, would be like five. Yeah. So that would be really hard unless they were, like I said, on drugs, which they weren't. Well, um, I've I've got an example where necessarily that's not true, Nick. Oh, really? Yeah. There was, and I'm going to have to look this up because I can't remember. Mm -hmm. I wrote an article on this on the old Reddit machine. This was some time back. And there was a bizarre situation that happened a very, very long time ago. Okay. Now, they tried to determine what would cause this to occur. Mm -hmm. And let me see if I can find the article that I wrote. It's been a little while since I've wrote it, so it might take me a second to find it. But the it's long not related to the witch trials, was it? No. Okay. No. Definitely not. Uh, this was actually one where, and I forget exactly where this occurred. Oh, I forgot. I can't see it because it's in a secret private server that the public can't see. Okay. Um, I could probably go through my comments and find it anyway. Oh, you know what? I'm an idiot. I can go to my profile and look at everything I've ever wrote. Hmm. Uh, I think I think I can do that. Uh, but anyway, basically what happened is in this town, all these people started dancing. Oh, I do know this story. And we're talking hundreds of people started dancing uncontrollably mm -hmm. to the point to where they started dying. Oh, really? Yeah, there was people that died from it. Now, a lot of times they try to say that maybe that was like a mass hysteria. Mm -hmm. 
maybe it was a case where the people had a delusion similar to what we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. Now that Nick, that's not even five. That's hundreds. That's true. Was was there if you remember the case, because it sounds very similar to something else I heard one time. Mm -hmm. I was this in a place where dancing was outlawed? No, I don't believe it was outlawed. Okay. Okay. Because I heard a similar story where dancing was outlawed and people kept doing it, but they blamed it on being bit by a spider. They did also say that this could have been from a spider. They did say that. Well, that's what people were blaming it on. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because if they got caught dancing, they would have gone to jail. No, mm. some people died from that because they were like, well, if you were bit by a spider and the poison's in your system, I guess you're going to keep doing it. Yeah. And they did that. But that's an interesting story. Maybe it's not the one you're thinking of. I'm because, looking now because it's, it's unfortunately. Yeah, because that's how the spider, the tarantula. Yeah. Got its name because the dance. The tarantula is a dance. And then they named the spider after that. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. They had a yeah, case like that where they renamed the spider. Well, I guess the spider might, must not have had a name or oh, something. Oh, so it didn't like even that. have a name yet. I thought, yeah. Oh, okay. But they, they were saying the spider's bite made you dance. But it was really a scapegoat for people who were repressed. That makes sense. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, that can happen. I don't feel like that's the case. But it could be. I mean, we're talking about. A case of almost like mass hysteria to a degree. Yeah. And I guess that does happen. I I don't feel it's the case. And and the first one, if they did a like a drug screening, that would that is a toxicology report, is it not? Wouldn't that have brought up any poisons that were Well, not necessarily. If it's like a hallucinogen um like a almost like a fume, possibly. I don't okay. know that that would stay in your system and they probably wouldn't li- even look to find that kind of stuff. The, yeah. the drug test is going to look for specific resins in your body. I suppose. But if it was an environmental factor, would it have lasted for three to five days after they left? Probably. Oh. I would. I, I mean, I don't know enough about this to say one way or another. It seems unlikely to me, but you never know I mean even if you directly take a drug it doesn't usually last that long yeah I could see that so I I don't know if I buy that one or not but the middle one where they you know they legitimately thought someone was after him for something so you definitely think it's probably two I, I, I think I'm more inclined to think it's two very interesting Nick very interesting. Wait, did you think it was three? I assume I thought that it could very likely be three. Okay. And here's why. Mm-hmm. If it was mobsters, right now they're back home. Yeah. Well, I suppose that's not a very safe place to return. To. <laughs> it's not a very safe place to be. Uh, if you're running from the mob, there. if you're running from the mob to that degree. Yeah. The last place you'd want to be is back at the place where they know you are. That's true. That is true. But of course, that's like the most popular thing. Like people are like, man, I bet it is the mobsters. They're all in. They're going to be underneath the third base. (laughs) The next ballpark. (laughs) So, yeah, definitely. Definitely weird at a Mm. minimum, minimum is how I'll put it. I mean, there's always a fourth option. No, oh, and I'm dying to hear this. That they did this as some kind of stunt. They're the ones that initially called the cops on themselves because someone did. To get them showing up at the house. They staged it to look weird, but no obvious crime. They left. They came back to their own house. They called the cops on each other and reported a missing and only missing like this could have been some kind of stunt, but why? That's the trick. 
Yeah. I mean, I, I can't think of a... Not only that, but they're going into crimes and stuff. Like, I don't see right. someone being like, hey, let's do this crime in addition to all of this. <laughs> yeah. They only did two petty crimes, though, I think. The auto theft? Grand Theft Auto? Uh... That's nothing. See, this is what happens, kids, when you go playing Grand Theft Auto <laughs> Five. All of a sudden, that kind of thing's okay. Like, it's not ideal. Uh, it seems fine. I mean, they probably returned it. It doesn't sound like they even got in trouble for it. Uh, yeah. N- nowhere did it really tell if they did or not. Yeah. I'm still looking for this article, man. I must have wrote that a very long oh. time ago. I remember writing it. Um, what if this is some kind of distraction from something other? That the family's involved in that they didn't want people to find out like some kind of scandal might have started to come out or which is entirely possible you know so they do this great big distraction which is definitely possible i would not say that it's yeah. impossible but still that leaves us with what what was the purpose of that what was the distraction from the hardest thing is always the why for me right and when it comes to this story it's why would someone go through all of this right because there's no reason for it well what did they really go through it took a little drive well think about it they went an entire week without doing anything with their farm yeah now they have it may be intentional like i don't know yeah but like when you've got animals and stuff like you know yeah Oh, yeah. You know, they're not going to want to do anything that would hurt the animals. Maybe it's a garlic farm. (laughs) It could be a garlic farm. That's not wrong. It's Australia. Listen, they do different things in Australia, and that's completely fine. You know, the rain will get it. It's fine. (laughs) It's like Stardew Valley. I don't have to do my farm work today because it rained. You know, I've never played that game. Uh, The game's relaxing as heck. Yeah, a lot of people say that. I probably yeah. need to play that game. In all yeah, you should. You, you know, you can play it on mobile now. My friend was showing me. What? She plays it all the time. Yeah. Hmm. Just like the real thing. Didn't know that was an option. I've got a handheld device that does not have illegal ROMs on it. I would never do something like oh. that. Uh, but I think it's on there also. I think. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, I hope you I don't rip so. off the concerned eight. He's a good guy. The what? That's the one who that's the one who made it concerned ape. Oh yeah, yeah. He's he's a good guy. Don't rip him off. That makes sense. That's yeah. an internal joke, Nick. Right. Well, I don't know. I think a lot of people played Stardew Valley. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the funny thing. I found mm-hmm. all of my posts. Now yeah, it's a you question. See it there? Well, I'm looking because I've wrote a lot of different ones. I'm uh, one of those guys that likes does like I like to do like history things. Yeah. On there, and it's basically just a. It's like a. First off, I don't even know how I ended up in this mm-hmm. server. They chose mm-hmm. me somehow. You were the chosen one. Yeah, but once a week you have to do. This is why I couldn't find it. Uh, it was from over a year ago. Um, uh, it was called the Dancing Plague of 1518. Oh, okay. In July 15 in July of 1518, there was an event that struck the city of Strasbourg, a part of the Holy Roman Empire, now France. A woman named Frau Trofea, I butchered that name, sorry. Mm-hmm. She dead though. Uh, began mm-hmm. dancing in the streets and she couldn't stop. Within a week, oh. 34 others joined her and by the end of the month, about 400 people were dancing. Wow. This strange phenomena, later known as the dancing plague, continued for about a month. The dancers seemed unable to stop, and some of some of them even died from exhaustion, heart attacks, or strokes. Hmm. The cause of the dancing mania remains a mystery. Some theories suggest that it was due to uh what's that called? Ergon poisoning? Oh, ergon poisoning? Ergot, yeah. From the f- corn? The fungus and stuff that's on the yeah, stuff? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. From hysteria. the wheat, sorry, not the corn, the wheat. Uh, I think I think it's rye, right? Yeah, because it was in the bread. That's what also what they say caused the witch trials. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, they thought it was either that mass hysteria or religious, some type of a religious thing. But okay. that was also an unexplained phenomenon. But that was up to 400 people within, think about yeah. it, 30 days, Nick. Uh, they just wanted to dance, man. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine if it was, uh, what's that movie? Uh, Dirty uh, Dancing. Could you imagine? Uh, <laughs> teacher coming out, screaming out, Nick. Oh, yeah. There's 400 of them. They can't <laughs> there's do 400. nothing. Can't know 400 of you Jezebels yeah. dancing in the middle of the street. <laughs> then there'd be one guy there in a funny hat that says, you can dance if you want to. You can bring your friends. One of the greatest songs ever made. And it makes no sense hardly at all. That's right. That's right. I think that's why everyone likes it so much. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but yeah i think this is uh one that we'll never be able to answer nick because none of it makes no. sense no i i think what i'm gonna settle on is it's a distraction uh some kind of distraction event that the family did on purpose and it worked whatever it was i mean it worked really well because everyone's really thinking about this and they're not thinking about anything else. So. And they're like, what the heck is going on? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just like what we're doing. Like, what and the that, heck? that leads me to think misdirection. Because I always think of a magician, how they're they're causing a commotion with this hand, but really the thing's coming from this hand. That is true. You know? That is true. That's what I think of. Well, I don't know. What do y'all think at home? What do you think caused all these people to be out here and then they get separated and all these things. Do you think it's like Nick what he's saying? Do you think it's a case where they was just trying to pull the wool over your eyes? Maybe you're like me. Maybe you think there was something on the farm. Maybe they was huffing some fertilizer. We don't know. Listen, I don't judge them. Judge for his own. Wait, Listen. but it would have still been there when they come back. They would have done it again. I mean, that is valid. That is valid. Sorry. Nick. Sorry. I had to interrupt. You're not wrong on that. <laughs> you're definitely right. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I really well, don't know. I just messed up that whole exit. <laughs> you did. I don't know. Now you've got me Oops. thinking. You're right. Yeah. Well, what do you guys think? Yeah, what do you guys think? Something else. We don't have a We're clue. Out of ideas. We're well, stumped. Hopefully, y'all like this. Now, understand when this comes out, it will probably be the very beginning of October. At the mm -hmm. end of October, we are doing the halloween special now the important part of that is we are taking stories from our listeners mm -hmm. and soundscaping them. and we're soundscaping them and we're creating stories much like what we do but that entire episode is only your guys' story mm -hmm. whether we have three stories or we have 30 stories we tell them all in that episode yeah you know what i love about that what we don't have to solve a mystery. We just get to enjoy the story, <laughs> you just get to and, enjoy the story. <laughs> and talk about the story. I love that. That is true. But you're running out of time, so you're going to want to rush to our website. At the top of our website, which you go to www.deceptiverealitypodcast.com, in the top right-hand side, you're going to see Submit a Story. You click on that, and you can put your own personal story on our website, and we will create everything else around it. Here's the thing. You might be like, oh, my story's not even that good. We will make it that good. Oh, uh, we'll make it Hollywood. You better believe. You will become Holly weirded for days. But hopefully you guys do that for us because uh, we're probably going to need some help by the time this episode comes out. I have a few stories already. Um, not many. So get your stories in. Get them in. But until we see y'all in the next podcast, goodbye. And like and stuff. Bye -bye. Like our podcast. Yeah. Like, subscribe, ring bells. Yeah. Play Comment. a triangle. Comment Trumpets. stuff. Yeah. Stop being dumb. Silent